2020 championship to come in number two. This should be a great game. The uh, Miners played Bryce Valley up in the Vivint Smart Home Arena the other night. Other night, and uh, this Tinning Miner team is legit. They're a great team. Fast. Yeah, this is a there's a great Tinnick team there. Jesse Wall, I don't think played for the Miners in that in the 1A preview, and, and Wall averages 14 and a half points a game, and that's a kind of a big. He's a big part of the team. You you take out anybody's number one or number two, and they're they're going to struggle. Yeah, and Wall's number two in scoring, 14 and a half points per game for Tinnick. Tipped out of there by Evans. Miners with the ball to start off. Wall and Whitney have been uh, key players for Tinnick the last couple of years. The thing they've been missing is, I think, uh, at least one piece they've been missing is that big player. Curtis Evans, a big guy down inside, can compete with guys like Chase Air. Absolutely. And uh, ball tipped away there. Goes back court. And that's going to be an interesting battle inside Chase Air and uh, J or Curtis Evans. Air averages three times the points a game. But Evans last night defensively, I was impressed with his, his play. Yeah, and if he just plays smart, it's a big body in there. He's got about the same height and length as Air. So if he, like you see him right now, playing physical, denying the pass, making Air work for it, that's going to make things hard. Little fall away jumper won't go, but he draws the foul. And that's going to be key. If Evans gets in foul trouble, Tindy doesn't necessarily have the size on the bench to bring in. Yeah, and I think that was maybe part of the issue, too, when they launched the Penguins earlier this year was that depth. Of course, Penguins doesn't go real deep on the bench either, do they, Mike? No. No, they'll they'll play six. They're usually a real good free throw shooter, misses his first. I've seen when Penguins played Bryce Valley, Air misses both. They did not sub once. Of course, <laughs> Canyon Lamb is their... Kind of their sixth man off the bench, and he was out with a hurt ankle. Okay. Whitney in the paint, blocked by Orton. Long arms of Orton, quick jumper. Gets up and blocks the ball and foul on Wall. And Orton, some athleticism, good length. He's got real hops. I already dunked yesterday against Pinnacle. Yeah. Yeah, it was, he actually showed a lot of class in the set. You know, they were up by quite a bit. He did that one early on. And uh, he had another opportunity and just laid it up. Marshall up top, Inglestead. Wolfley inside the air, double teamed. Wall steps in front of the pass and takes it away. And Whitney will bring it up. That's not Whitney, that's Fitzgerald. Good anticipation by Wall to go in there for the steal. Three-point shot up and good by Peterson. That's the one thing the Bobcats cannot let happen is Peterson get hot outside. He had a bunch of threes against the Mustangs up in the Vivint Arena. Orton with the take, won't go. Rebound pulled out of there by Peterson. Round the back, ball loose, picked up by Orton. He'll go the other way. Out of bounds. Peterson trying to do too much on that last dribble. I think Coach Thomas would probably say, hey, slow that down. Let's not give away you know, any easy turnovers, easy takeaways for Penguins. Interesting note, 15 years ago before Curtis Barney, or not Curtis, Clint Barney moved to Pink, which he actually helped get shot by Evans. He was a coach up at Tindick. So when these kids were babies, he was living in, in Tindick and help, helping their program get started up there 15 years ago. Tindick doing some double teaming. If there's a man down in close to the paint, they're putting a double team on Jace Ayer. They call Inglestead with the travel. 
And just watch ne next time that, that Penguins goes down on offense. Look how hard Air is working just to try and even get open, let alone get the ball. That's one thing I noticed in the region tournament when they played Paiute. Paiute played them really physical. And uh, Air seemed to wear down. Mm -hmm. the, he and Orton both look tired. And they're both extremely athletic. Both out any substitution, you better be in good shape. If you oh, yeah. It, and the other thing is, I, I think, I haven't watched the Penguin a lot this season, but I, I think Air spends a lot of time out on the perimeter. He's their leading three-point right? shooter. A five-second violation for Tinnick. But So what that does is, if he's not throughout the season banging, working down inside, then when he has to do that, it takes more out of him. Uh, yeah, that pushing, you need that, that muscle, that strength. doesn't just come by running you know it's uh gotta work for that oh nice pass marshall fouled hard that was a nice pass from jace air reminiscent of last year and barney passing across the lane to air this yeah. time air on the delivery to marshall i've heard i've heard it said that i uh, just they'll they go it's all about air and and you won't see a more unselfish player than Jace Air. If, if he, there's someone to get the ball to, in fact, I think sometimes he got to take some of those shots that he gives up. Mm. Oh, of three from the foul line. Marshall makes his second. 525 left in the first, and Penguins gets their first points of the game. Already a much different game when the, than when these teams met back on December 8th. They're on the same floor. Absolutely. Whitney. Picks up his dribble, defended by Orton. Fitzgerald with Marshall on him, goes to the ground, gets the ball to Whitney. Marshall's got his work cut out for him, keeping up with Fitzgerald speed-wise. And that pressure out on the perimeter, Tinnick probably didn't see a whole lot of that in Region 21, at least against some of their opponents. So that's going to be a, an issue for Tinnick to deal with today, too. Player control foul on Whitney. He just gave a little shove with that off elbow. You could see it kind of kick out as he tried to create some space. Marshall, Inglestead looks into air. Aaron Evans tangled up, both of them banging in there hard. And Evans fronting, and then he's got help side defense from behind. Orton down low post, kicks out to Wolfley. Inglestead inside to Marshall, looks into air. He had air for a split second. Three-point shot by air, rims off the front iron, pulled down by Evans. Wall on the break. Spins back, kicks it. Peterson looks. Drives into the paint, scoops it up with his left hand, won't go. Rebound air for the Bobcats. Good opportunity to miss there for Peterson to extend the lead. That was a nice drive. He just couldn't quite finish. As good a shooter as Peterson is, I was surprised he had just pull up for the three. Orton misses, gets his own rebound. In the past, that's uh, an air ball. But now if you're attempting a shot, of course, you can just pull that back down and go back up with it. Wolfley will take the three. Gets it for the Bobcats. Two offensive rebounds on that possession for Penguin, which enables the three. Whitney has the ball tipped away. No, they say it wasn't tipped. He, they're saying he just lost it. And I don't know, I think Tinnick fans and, and Coach Thomas right now arguing his case as well. I didn't see the tip, but we're a long ways away. Yep. Penguin on a 4-0 run can take the lead. Engelstead. Jump stop, Orton right side. Marshall. That's trouble for, Peng or for Tinnick right there. Curtis Evans just picked up a second foul, battling for position with air. And a fifth Tinnick team foul. Air talking to the official saying, hey, if I'm just holding my arms up here, I can hold them out. <laughs> Trying to clarify what he's allowed to do. So now David Whitney 
charged with the task of defending air. Good help D by Whitney there. He came out to guard Mar or Ingolstead and then popped out when Ingolstead gave it to air in the corner. Marshall in the corner back to Ingolstead. Was number 22, Jacob Whitney, into the game for the Miners. Did you already say that? Yeah. I didn't say it, no. I, I mentioned him, but didn't say his first name. <laughs> oh, nice bounce pass, high post air, spins back out the three point line. Orton, right wing, dribbles left hand and pulls up, elevates for two. Tinnick started off well, uh, got those uh, two quick buckets, but they haven't scored in about five minutes of game time. S five turnovers in this first quarter for the Miners. Drive, floater, won't go, and rebound fouls going on. Bryson Marshall with his second personal. That puts McCoy Fitzgerald at the line. He shoots way short. That one off the back of the iron and in. Canyon Lamb set to check in for the Bobcats. Marshall, high post, turns, looks, hands back to Wolfley. Orton up top. Bobcats overload the left side of the court. Orton tries to get the corner on Whitney. Whitney extremely fast, able to hold on to his own ground. Down into air from Marshall. Strong finish from air. You know, he's got the touch outside, and then he knows when to just go up strong, make sure to get that basket, or at least draw the foul. The Bobcats on top. Eight to six on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Fitzgerald left side. David Whitney and a foul away from the ball on Trevor Wolfley. Hmm. <laughs> well, Canyon Lamb listed on the state roster as number 34, but he's number 20, right, Mike? Correct. Yeah, that's Canyon Lamb. Defensive battle so far. Inside to Whitney, shot over air, won't go air with the rebound. You know, a guy like that, even when he doesn't get the block, still contests the shot, alters the release, and that one way off target because air was there defending. Lamb, left side, wall falls back. Air for three, rims out, rebound. Loose, picked up by Orton. Orton will give to air, inside Lamb. Lamb a good post player himself. A little smaller than Marshall, but a little quicker and plays the post actually, I think, a little better than Marshall does down low. Real reliable player from coming off the bench for the Bobcats. He's averaging almost six points a game off the bench as a junior. Orton, oh, dishes down to Lamb and an offensive foul takes the bucket off the board. Jesse Wall saw, Engel, or saw Orton coming, just planted his feet, drew the charge. Nice play defensively by Wall. 3.4 seconds to go in the first quarter, and Tinnick not much time. That's going to do it for the first quarter. You're, you've been watching Utah 1A basketball on live.ksl.com and on mylocalradio.com. On the weekends... Our weeks never end. We'll be devoted to you all day. And we'll keep working for you all night until the job is done.
When it comes to traditions, at the top of the list would be Henry's Drive-In on Highway 89 in Panguitch and a hot and juicy chubby cheeseburger. Julie and Colleen at Henry's wish all teams the best of luck. From dents to scratches, auto service, paint and detailing, give Joe a call today for any of your auto body needs. Joe Dalton Auto Body and Circle, 435-577-2442, wishing Region 20 teams success. Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of Utah 1A basketball. Just, Mike, oh, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you again. They, these teams are high-powered teams. Tinnick fourth in 1A, 65 points a game. Penguins just ahead of them at 66 points a game. So that 8-6 to six at the end of the first quarter is a real defensive battle, especially for these two teams. Yeah, and you're seeing it with some missed shots that you never see missed against... Uh, teams that can't apply that defensive pressure. Oh, yeah, and, and the other issue that, uh, like, Tinnick has had, they haven't really even been able to get it inside the arc with a pass. That's the kind of pressure that Penguich has put on them. One or two times they've passed it inside without giving it away, and there's another giveaway there. Out to Orton. Orton on the break. Scoops it up and one. Whitney put his hand on the back of Orton, and they give him the call. And that's just a mistake by Whitney. That, that, free, that layup's going to happen whether Whitney contests it or not and even just a light touch is going to get called every time yeah you know you just got to let that happen so interesting you're talking about offense so i looked at the defense yeah and the bobcats allow 40 41 points a game mm -hmm. and the miners allow 47 points a game so offensively and defensively <laughs> really similar. Yeah, both these teams right at the top, top four at worst in both offense and defensive points per game. Wall drives, pull up, pulls up over Wolfley, won't go. Air with another big rebound for the Bobcats. Air with four rebounds, just the two points so far, but Penguich on top by five on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. With the way that they're playing air on the inside, he's going to have a hard time Right, and, and the thing that has to happen for Penguich is that with so much focus on air, other guys like Orton, like Canyon Lamb, have to step up, hit some shots when they're open, because they will be. Absolutely. Lamb, baseline blocked by Wall. Great defense by Wall. And it's a physical game, and I like that the officials are letting them play for the most part. Fitzgerald, right side, looks in. Side to well, number 22, Whitney. And a blocking foul on air. It, that looked like to me like the right call. I thought he came in just a touch late to try and draw that charge. That's air's first foul. Free throws could play a very big factor in this game, Mike, uh, for either team, one way or the other. Absolutely. They, uh, every game so far, this is the fourth game of the day in, this, in the championship side, and every game of the day has been within a couple points and has come down to free throws. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Cache Valley Visitors Bureau for outdoor adventure, a foodie trek, amazing music and theater, Utah State Athletics as well. Find your fun in Logan by visiting explorelogan.com. What's a foodie trek? Uh, that's where you uh, go to different restaurants, you taste a little bit of food from each spot. It's uh, a trek for food. Uh, it doesn't, it, could anything be better than that? No. no. That sounds good. 30-second timeout on the floor. Thanks for watching Utah 1A Basketball on KSL and MyLocalRadio.com. At Jensen Wood Motor, it's our goal to make sure every customer is a repeat customer. The way we do that, our customers are our friends. It's our job to help you find what you're looking for at the best possible price. It's always good to know that your salesman is working for you. We understand that life happens. Sometimes credit isn't perfect. We work hard to find financing options that work best for you. Stop by today and let's see what we can do for you. Jensen Wood Motors in Mount Peter, Idaho. Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of 1A Basketball. Does it get any better? 
Ryan. Man, it's a close one. 11 to 8. This is a tight game. We've got two teams that, if they were on opposite side of the bracket, could very well meet in the championship game. But they're yeah. meeting here in the quarterfinals today. Air will take that three rims out. He's had three three-point attempts, and they've all looked about like that. Extremely close, just, just a touch off and rimming out. And Tinnick loves that every time. They need that to happen throughout the game today to keep it close. If Air gets hot from outside, hits two or three of those in a quarter. Wall loses the handle, gets it out to Peterson. Peterson drives. Almost gets that one, put back up and in by Whitney. Jacob Whitney cuts that lead to one. Jacob Whitney coming off the bench, giving some great minutes in replacement of Curtis Evans, who has two <laughs> fouls and is sitting over there on the sideline. Jace Air, left wing, looks into Lamb. Inglestead to Orton. Air drives, little floater, won't go. Rebound Lamb, puts it up and in. And that's the kind of thing that Penguins needs from Lamb. The offensive rebound, the putback, just hustle, hustle points. Peterson, Inglestead just dogging Peterson everywhere he goes. Rebound put back up and in by Whitney. Jacob Whitney coming up big, four points in the quarter. So often you get these matchups that, you know, the starters match up pretty good and it comes down to, okay, where are those, where are those extra points going to come from? Is it going to be... You know, Whitney, is it going to be Lamb? Who's going to come off the bench and make the big splash to, to put your team over the top? Lamb right side. Air looks. Inglestead. Ball knocked away by Peterson. Inglestead gets it back. Right side, air. Screen from Lamb right side. Pulls up. He'll drop it down Ooh. into Lamb. Nice assist from air to Lamb. Well, and Air really sold the shot. That made the difference. Two defenders out on him as he goes up, elevates to shoot, and then he just drops it in there. And Lamb does his job to finish on the easy bucket. Taken away by Orton. Saves it in. Picked up by Air. Gets it out to Wolfley. Wolfley looks inside the Lamb. Up and good. <laughs> Six points in the quarter for Lamb. That puts him ahead of his per game average of 5.6 points per game. There's probably a little deceiving on his points per game because there was three or four games he sat out to. And yeah. Those red news. Yeah. So, and they're still showing that he played 25 or whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, whether it's 5.6 or 7.6, he's having a great quarter here in relief of Marshall. Wolfley up top, drives, pulls up for the jumper, rims out, tipped, pulled down by Fitzgerald. Pass taken away by Wolfley. Orton baseline drives, kicks it back to Wolfley. Wolfley fakes, takes it up, and he's fouled. Whitney trying for the block, got a big hold of, uh, of Wolfley's arm and helped him right back up. He didn't mean anything malicious by that strong foul. But that's a third foul on David Whitney. That's big. So Whitney with three fouls, Curtis Evans with two. Tinnick, eight turnovers in this first half. It's a, a few problems that are going to lead to big issues later on. There's not many teams. You know, you look at the scoring per game, and there's not many teams that have three scores, like 13, 14, 15, mm -mm. like uh, the Miners do. They can score points. Fourth in 1A, 65 a game. And if you look at some of their games, like uh, in, in a region game against Wendover, 79 points, 80 in a win over Dugway. Whitney up top, yo-yos, back pedals, defended by Lamb. Wall, yeah. ball loose, picked up by Wolfley for the Bobcats. Air pulls up for three, ribs over. Peterson with the rebound. Full timeout on the floor, Tinnick. You're tuned in to Utah 1A Basketball on KSL and mylocalradio.com. 
J&D Forest Products in Penguins, Utah invite you to come visit them for all your building and log home needs. K&D would like to wish all teams success in the postseason. From giant delicious fluffy pancakes for breakfast and our great selection of sandwiches for lunch, to our choice steaks or our amazing homemade country fried steak and mashed potatoes for dinner, top it off with homemade pie and Kenny Ray's is just like home. MyLocalRadio.com is Southwest Wyoming and Northeast Utah's top website and the best source for local area news, weather, sports, and community events. And that's not all. MyLocalRadio.com features thousands of photographs of Wyoming and Utah high school events from speech and drama competitions to local events, sports and activities, and much more. Check it out today and see what MyLocalRadio.com has for you. Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of Utah 1A basketball. Tenick had climbed to within one. It was 13-12, but a 5-0 run by the Miners, or by the Bobcats, rather. Nice drive by Peterson, unable to finish. Rebound Orton of the Bobcats gives to Air. Wolfley. Two minutes to go in the second quarter, and for two high school, the two of the top four scoring offenses in the state, and a reach in on number 32. That's Logan Snell. We don't have a lot of points on the board for being high scoring no, offenses. No, we don't. These are also two of the top defenses in the state. And a lot of times, especially at state, you'll get the defenses prevail. You know, and, uh, and realistically, so the Miners usually allow 47 points. The Bobcats are almost halfway there. I mean, a few off halfway there, but they're close. Yeah. Whitney back to Peterson. Looks to pass to Fitzgerald. Cuts back door wall to Peterson. Drives baseline. Kicks. Whitney for, or not Whitney. Fitzgerald for three. Air with a rebound. Pass ahead to Lamb. Oof. That's a long pass from Orton. The Bobcats probably didn't need that. It, no. This time, take a little more time off the clock, get a good look. I see what he's looking at, and it's so tempting. Penguins with six turnovers. I've got Tinnock with nine. Peterson to Whitney. Pass out of the reach of Wall. Tipped away by the Bobcats. Surprised that they haven't brought Evans back in. Um, he had two fouls, not three, but I guess they'll save him for the second half. Yeah, and Jacob Whitney's done a real nice job. He's allowed That's Air true. to just score one basket. And granted, the, the help on Air from other guys has allowed Canyon Lamb six points, or have been part of what uh, has allowed Canyon Lamb the six points in the quarter. Drive and lay up by Logan Snell. Snell came in last night and had a great game for Tendick off the bench. He's a senior. Good to see. You know, he's put in his time, all the hours of sweat and practice, and pays off a little bit right there. And they're going to get Whitney with a foul on well, or, or on air. That'll put air to the foul line, shooting a one and one. Air 0 for 2 so far in this ball game from the line. He missed his first two attempts. The score was still 0-0. Makes them both. 20 to 14, Bobcats lead by six on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Peterson looks for that high screen from Whitney. Cross court, Fitzgerald drives, pulls up baseline, jumper won't go, tip, Whitney with the rebound, blocked by air. Inglestead to Lamb at the buzzer, too late. 
That's going to do it for the first half. 20 to 14, Bobcats lead by six. You're watching Utah 1A Basketball on KSL and MyLocalRadio.com. Feeling the worst? Snap out of it. Become a new you in no time. With Logo Maniacs, look your best. Logo Maniacs, the right look for the right price. As Utahns, we don't have to go far to find a bit of heaven. Historic Panguitch City, nestled in southern Utah's high plateaus, just 20 miles from Bryce Canyon National Park. Panguitch is a year-round celebration of heritage and outdoor culture. <laughs> That was your Panguitch High School cheerleaders. And so that'll do it. Hang with us. We'll be back after this for the Southern Utah University Halftime Report and Highlights. We'll be back in a minute. When it comes to quality, Ellen Ford Brothers in Evanston always delivers year-round. Whether you are looking for cement, gravel, road base, cement watering troughs, culverts, sand, steel fabrication services, steel products, accessories for your vehicles, trailer hitches, or snow removal for your company or organization, Ellen Ford Brothers is the name to remember. Quality services and fair prices, three things you'll always find at Elling Ford Brothers. Call us today at 307-789-1515. There's nothing quite like getting your prescription filled where the employees know you and you know them. We have the time to help you make informed decisions, personalization that a mail order pharmacy can't provide. At Panguitch Drug, we believe that friendly, fast service is most important. Serving Wyoming since 1941, Plains Tire is Wyoming's oldest and largest tire dealer with great locations throughout the state. They'll get you the right tires that offer the best results for your vehicle at the lowest prices guaranteed. Plus, you can go to any Plains Tire Pro dealer with their nationwide warranty service and check out their Plains Tire phone app. Come down to see us at Plains Tires on 157 Fair River Drive for all your automotive needs. Hablamos también español.
Rocky Mountain Fencing, located in Panguitch, has been serving Southern Utah for over 20 years. Owner Mark K. Inglestead is a proud supporter of Region 20. Give Mark K. a call today, 435-463-1659. Royal Express Transmission, Stuart and his staff of highly trained technicians can take care of any of your automotive needs, brakes, inspections, alignment, transmission, ATV repair, and towing. Give Royal Express a call, 435-676-8300. Ruby's Inn General Store has the area's widest selection of Indian arts and crafts, curios and groceries. Located one mile from the entrance to Bryce Canyon National Park, Ruby's General Store has what you need. If you or your friends are looking for a home or vacation home at beautiful Bear Lake, you don't have to wait any longer to live your dream. Bear Lake Realty has properties in every price range. Relax. Create memories for generations to come in your home or vacation home at one of the most beautiful lakes on earth. It all starts with a phone call. We will help you find the perfect home for you and your family. Call today, Gary McKee at Bear Lake Realty, 435-946-8888 or go to bearlakerealty.com. Local decisions. This is Utah results. 1A basketball on live.ksl.com and on mylocalradio.com. Welcome back for the halftime. We've got the Penguin Bobcats and the Tinnick Miners. The Bobcats lead by six, 20 to 14, on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. What Southern Utah University sponsoring this halftime show. Check them out at suu.edu. And what a different game than when these two teams met about, what, three months ago tomorrow. Uh, Tinnick lost to Penguin 73 to 43. I guess that was December 8th, so a little bit less than three months ago. It was a Penguin, a dominant win for the Bobcats, but in this one, Tinnick has kept the scoring lower. They've taken care of the ball a little bit better, and they're just about matching blow for blow with Penguin. They've got their work cut out for them in the second half, but it was a good first half from Tinnick. Yeah, and the real story... Um, Jacob Whitney coming off the bench. Evans had two fouls early for the Miners. Whitney coming off the bench. Has four points, but he's played defense really well on air. And the Miners overall have held air to two points in each quarter. A two-point bucket in the first, two free throws in the second. Um, and, and that's a big, big job for for the miners. Yeah, and I guarantee Air is feeling it right now because he's he's maybe that's been one of the hardest halves he's had to work this season just to even try and get the ball and he hasn't gotten it much. That's been Tinnick's uh, strategy to keep the hands of the ball out of the hands of Air. And Kenny Lamb has taken advantage of that. He leads all scores with 6 points all of them in that second quarter. Now, if you'd have told me coming into this game that the <laughs> leading scorer would have 6 points in the first <laughs> half, I'd be like, "Dude, mm. no." I, I really Try expected again. a little higher a little more fast breaking, but the defense on both sides has really been good. And these teams just uh, both are very good on defense <laughs> and, and smart coaches. I mean, you don't win cha state championships like Penguin has in recent years without smart coaching from Clint Barney. And Jed Thomas has been there a number of years for Tinnick, or Luke Thomas, excuse me. And, and boy, they've just gotten better and better in the last two or three years. And here they are with a chance to move on to the semifinals and keeping it close with Penguin. Absolutely. This has been a Halftime report and highlights brought to you by Southern Utah University. You've been watching 1A Basketball on KSL and MyLocalRadio.com. We'll be back at the start of the second half. When you are buying or refinancing a home, did you know you can request your own title company? Keep Business Local and request security title for all your title, closing, and escrow needs. Travis and Hillary wish all team success in the postseason tournaments. Shed Inc., located at 44 North Main in Panguitch, Randy and Matt will take care of all of your screen printing needs. Need some extra cash? They'll buy those shed antlers you've been looking to sell. Call Shed Inc. today. Go Cats! Subway has fresh fit options because reaching your goals is the only option. Subway has eight delicious six inch subs with 400 calories or less. Try the Subway fresh fit menu. This ad brought to you by the Silver Eagle Gas Station and Subway in Panguitch. SEC's dedicated team won't drop the ball. We're committed to providing with the fastest, most reliable network available. Call us today and get connected or visit us online at socen.com.
People hear words like server or cloud storage and are usually confused. I hear those words and think, solutions. It didn't start that way. When I enrolled at Southern Utah University, it wasn't clear to me where I'd end up. The professors at SUU took the time to get to know me and help steer my natural people skills and leadership talents into a successful business career. Now I'm a leader in the business of global connectivity, thanks to the guidance I received from Southern Utah University. Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of Utah 1A Basketball, coming to you live from the Severe Valley Center. The Penguins Bobcats and the Tittick Miners, the Bobcats lead by six. I'm Mike Alston alongside Ryan Steinecker. Luis Valenzuela producing. Michael Parsons on the camera. Peterson drives all the way to the basket, blocked, rebound put up, and in by Evans. Curtis Evans gets back into the game to start this third quarter and makes his presence known immediately with that follow and finish. Marshall looks into air, but air double teamed by Wall and Evans. Bounce pass to Marshall, high post. Kicks it out, that's tipped. Wolfley chases it down. Gives to Ingolstead, Marshall. Oh. Oh, hold on Evans. You know, that's it's like, oh, there's not a lot of contact. But when you put your hands on their hips yeah. and try to guide them, it's really a hold. Yeah. Yep, I mean, like contact, and Evans uh, picks up his third foul. Air, baseline, spin, shot up, blocked. <laughs> no call. <laughs> wow. That would... Yeah, so that's, that's got to be tough for the guys because for Evans, he's called for that little touch, touch. on the hip, and then, that, man, that looked like two or three fouls on the shot <laughs> attempt by Aaron. That was, that was interesting. An interesting no call, and it is what it is. Ball out of bounds, minor basketball. Fitzgerald fakes, drives, 10-footer, short, rebound, Orton for the Bobcats. Air will take the three-point shot, ribs oh. out again. Is that foul going to be a Marshall? I think it'll be Air. They give it to Marshall. Okay. That's Marshall's fourth. Wow. That's part of why he sat most of that second quarter. Oh, that it wasn't out of bounds out here. It was his third. Oh, that was, was foul. Marshall's yeah, you're third right. foul. That's right. Coach Clint Barney just said, hey, it was a pass. I was wondering the same thing. I didn't think Marshall was in the act of shooting, but he'll get two free throws. Misses both. And I said Marshall is it Fitzgerald at the line, misses both. Penguich or Pai Tinnick was three of four from the line before those two misses. Now just 50% in the game. Orton up top. Bobcats reset. 20 to 16 on your Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Inglestead to Lamb up top. Back to Inglestead. Bounce pass into Orton. Spins right. Little floater. Got it. Timeout, Coach Barney. This is Utah 1A Basketball on KSL on MyLocalRadio.com. Light up your world with a custom-built LED sign from Rocky Mountain Sign in Evanston. It's a proven fact that signage that lights up creates more attention. So light it up and then add text, images, and video, and your sign becomes even more powerful. Start sharing your advertising messages and information with your customers today. The team at Rocky Mountain Sign provides all types of quality signage that is custom-built and maintained. Call today for a free quote. Rocky Mountain Sign, 307-789-5202. Rocky Mountain Sign, serving customers in Wyoming, Utah, and Idaho.
Welcome back to this Elling Ford Brothers in Evanston presentation of Utah 1A basketball. Elling Ford Brothers are great sponsors of these tournaments. Construction company, Ryan? Yeah, uh, well, you name it, they probably do it. Construction, concrete, sand, gravel, fabrication, welding, all kinds of stuff. Ellingfordbros.com. Wall yo-yos, picks up from three, rims out, and then <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, Jesse Wall gets the shooter's roll. Something I'm not very familiar with, at least on my shots. And then I've never seen the <laughs> shaking out the three. I've seen him leave a three hanging, but he shook the three out. <laughs> After the basket, cuts that lead to three. Tinnick hanging around. Inside air. Oh, Jump wow. ball. <laughs> air on the ground. And it, well, you, it felt like you could feel and hear the hit from Jesse Wall. But an official right there, he must have seen a, a clean block. That's incredible. Air comes away wiping at his nose like he got hit in the face. That was a big block by. And Orton gets the basket. Tinnick being physical down inside, and they're just not giving Penguich an inch. Wall tipped down to nice job by Lamb saving that. That ball was tipped. It was going out of bounds. Lamb tips it up, saves it in, and then gets it back to, to Wolfley. Air looks at the three, drives in, fade away from the foul line, short off the front iron, rebound Wall. Tinnick, not a big presence inside, at least offensively. Curtis Evans, you don't see him posting up. He's just kind of trying to pull air out of the key to give guy, other guys uh, chances to, to go down inside. Whitney's shot won't go. Rebound air for the Bobcats. Lamb to Inglestead. Looks back in. Down to Orton. Gives it to air. He'll take the three. That one's short. And Coach Barney shouts at air, shoot it the first time. Don't hesitate till the defense is right on you. Evans with a little reverse hook for two. Air 0 for what about six or seven from beyond the arc. Uncharacteristic for him shooting. I think a part of that is just how hard he's had to work so far just to try and get the ball. Lamb takes the three and makes it. So Lamb off the bench. Defensively and offensively playing extremely well for the Bobcats. He and A.C. Orton have nine points apiece to lead all scorers. Evans, bounce pass down inside to Peterson, off the glass for two. Well, we're getting a lot of physicality down inside. A body landed on the floor from Panguich after that shot from Peterson. That was a nice strong take by Peterson to get the ball up through the defender. Wow. And a travel. Looked like Peterson's arm was inside Boston Inglestead's arm, which pulled Inglestead to the to our left. Caused that, the travel. Yeah, well, interesting. It looked like to me the arms were hooked, but that official was right there on top of it. No call. Whitney wanted a defensive blocking foul. Absolutely. And uh, Lamb with the rebound. Evans with the push off. Inglestead goes flying back and they catch him. That's Evans's fourth. So Evans has six points in the game, four fouls. His sub, but Jacob Whitney, I've got with one foul, four points in that second quarter. And Whitney's going to be called upon to do some big things here for Tinnick if they want to hang in. Pass hard. That was like 10 feet away. And too much mustard on it. It yeah. goes off Air's knee out of bounds. Down at the feet of Air. That's eight turnovers for Penguich. I've got Tinnick with 10. And even as athletic as a kid like Air is, it's hard to reach down and get that ball oh, yeah. at your feet. Peterson opened the scoring for Tinnick with the three. Tinnick was on top 5 nothing, but Penguich has a four-point lead on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Wall fakes, dishes, and a three on the shot. A foul on the three will put uh, Whitney, or Fitzgerald at the line, shooting three foul shots. Third team foul for Panguich.
Fitzgerald just one of the four, I believe, in the ball game from the free throw line. That's what I, I have as well. He had a chance to make it a one-point game. Misses the first free throw, though. Our broadcast today is brought to you in part by the Emerson Travel and Tourism Board. Don't miss the world-class Celtic Festival in Evanston, Wyoming, March 23rd and 24th. Visit EvanstonCelticFestival.com today. That's EvanstonCelticFestival.com. Soft touch gets that one to go as well. It's two of the three. Sinek within two. Lamb picks up his dribble, needs help. Foul tipped by Peterson. Twenty-seven, twenty-five on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Penguich with the lead. Bobcats went on an eight-to-one run at the end of the first quarter and have led since that point. Wolfley up top, defended by Fitzgerald. Bounce pass to Lamb. Orton to high post. Inglestead underneath. Air gets Whitney behind him and one. A great entry pass from that right wing. That was where only air could get it down, fired underneath the basket. Three-point opportunity for air. Makes it. So Jacob Whitney with two fouls. And uh, Curtis Evans on the bench with four. Big man's, uh, big guy's getting in a little bit of foul trouble for Tinnick. He's going to be a challenge the rest of the way. Fitzgerald. Gives to Whitney. Whitney fakes right, comes back left. Orton goes down. Rebound Lamb. Coach, or, or Coach Barney screaming for a timeout. Officials couldn't hear him. And well, the ball goes out of bounds. And I don't think, the, I think the officials may have also recognized the possession. Lamb, he pulled down the rebound and put great presence of mind to dribble it as he went to the floor. But I think then he lost possession, and I don't know if Penguish had possession to or get the timeout. You're probably right. And a walk. Interesting. It have been a jump ball. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. It may have been a jump ball. And one official, the down official, is going to confer. He... I think he may have seen what we thought we saw. But that takes the possession away from the Bobcats and gives it to the Miners. It, it looked to me, yeah, like, like what I think you saw the same thing. Peterson goes up, he tries to shoot, and, and what is it, Inglestead got a hand on the ball, and that's what forced Ingl Peterson to come back down to the floor in what looked like a travel. Offensive foul, foul. Wall extends that arm, pushes away on Wolfley. Just Wall's second foul, fourth team foul. Boy, Fitzgerald riding Wolfley all the way up the court. Orton fakes one way, comes back the other, takes it to the basket for two. Nice move by Orton, that just little stutter step, looks back outside and then cuts inside. That foul's going to go on air. Is that his second? Second. Boy, every time Tennant gets within one, two, three points, Penguich makes a push back out to a six or seven point lead. Peterson pulls up in the paint, rims off. Lamb with a big rebound for the Bobcats. 35 seconds to go in the third period. Orton. Orton's done a great job. <laughs> a lot of contact between Fitzgerald yeah, and Wolfley. Yeah, Wolfley pushing off with one arm, going for the ball with the other, and Fitzgerald pushing into Wolfley to try and get the ball. Was that a warning to the coach? It would appear so. They're not uh, lining up for any free throws. I didn't see the... the you know, the technical foul. Yeah, no, I don't think he called issued. the technical. Well, 
Official back over to talk with Coach Thomas. Penguins had the ball, so. Yeah, there's no way he could call a timeout. Can't time call out. a timeout. It must have just been a warning. It looks like Penguins will have the ball on the sideline with 13.6 seconds to go in the third quarter. Orton with the ball. Orton has done a great job when they get him isolated off the... Five-second violation. Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> Uh, Orton going to talk with the official now. He thought that maybe with that screen he created enough separation, but no. Shot up at the buzzer, won't go. So after three quarters of play, 33-25, Bobcats lead by seven on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. You're watching Utah 1A Basketball on KSL and MyLocalRadio.com. Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of Utah 1A basketball. Bobcats get the ball to start this fourth quarter. They have a lead, 32-25 over the Miners. Curtis Evans has four fouls. He's the starting big man for Tinnick, waiting to sub in on the next dead ball. Bounce pass into Air. Air spins back left, gets it up. They're calling him for all oh, the foul. You can say, I thought they were calling the travel. I thought so, too. It looked like a couple of guys got a piece of his arm, which may have been what caused right. what looked like a travel. Oh, wow. One official had travel, one official had a <laughs> foul, and they called with the tra travel. <laughs> well, you got to hand it to the guys in the stripes. They come out, they're just trying to do their best, and we appreciate what they do. They, they, they're going to make 50% of the crowd unhappy no Every matter call. what they call. Absolutely. Whitney to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald drives right, scoops it up, rims off, rebound Evans, blocked, fouled by air. So again, Evans, boy, I think it's really hurt Tinnick inside to not have Evans' offensive rebounding ability, his scoring, and it, it's not, I think I mentioned it earlier, he doesn't post up, he doesn't try to seal guys out and get the pass, but his cleanup abilities, like we just saw, now I hit a free throw, that's, that's a big thing for Tinnick. Absolutely, they give the foul to Lamb, so that's a good break for the Bobcats. Air, I think Air just has two fouls. That one hard off the back iron, rebound Lamb. Lamb having a great game. Nine points, five rebounds off the bench. It's been big for the Bobcats. Orton, high post, turns, looks, defended by Whitney, spins right, goes through the hoop, yeah. scores. Hey boy, Orton, it just doesn't look like a real muscly type guy, but he plays <laughs> strong. He, he really has strong hands, quick moves. He plays a lot stronger than he looks. And a foul on Wall. Pulls Air down awkwardly over backwards. Yeah, I hope Air gets up okay. Those two hug and uh, just hug it out, bro, right? That was good because Air came down awkwardly. That could have been bad for his back. 
Um, I was going to say before that happened, Orton, he's deceiving quick. Yeah. Because he's long, and he just looks like he's not going very fast, and all of a sudden, he's a boom. He's at the rim. Yeah. And, and, he's, and he's long arms, long I mean, he really is an athletic kid. Bounce pass down to Lamb. Ingolstead fakes the three, pulls in, 15-footer baseline. Won't go. Whitney with the rebound. Looks to get it up the floor in the corner. Peterson will take the three. That's short. Rebound Ingolstead in the corner. Wolfley gets up off the floor. Orton fakes, comes back. Oh, nice oh. pass down low to Lamb. Boy, that's as good as it gets. Uh, Orton weaving through traffic, taking care of the ball, and then the no-look dish. Largest lead of the game for the Bobcats, 36-26. You're watching 1A Basketball on live.ksl.com and mylocalradio.com. Having a beautiful, confident smile is something everyone deserves, which is why we're dedicated to providing our patients with an exceptional orthodontic experience. We want to give you a smile you'll be proud to share for the rest of your life. Give Wilson and Wet a call. fit options because reaching your goals is the only option. Subway has eight delicious six inch subs with 400 calories or less. Try the Subway Fresh Fit menu. This ad brought to you by the Silver Eagle Gas Station and Subway in Penguin. Welcome back to this Elling Ford Brothers in Evanston presentation of Utah 1A basketball. Inbounds to Peterson. Whitney in the corner, defended by Orton, drives, spins. Orton goes in the air. Whitney gets up, won't go, rebound air. Well, in a shot like that, I can't help but think that Luke Thomas, uh, coach of the Tinnick Miners, is thinking, come on, we can get a better shot than that. That uh, prayer with the left hand off the glass. You know, there's a, you give up a, give up a good shot for a great shot. Don't. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Timeout on the floor, Bobcats, to save the pos possession. It's a full timeout. Thanks for watching Utah 1A Basketball on live.ksl.com and on mylocalradio.com. Behind the scenes. Out of the spotlight. Empowering the dreams of others. We applaud that. Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. If you're looking for live local sports, local news, weather, live classifieds, and free photo downloads, search no more. MyLocalRadio.com has what you want. Watch your teams live or browse the tens of thousands of photographs of Wyoming, Utah, and Idaho high school events from speech and drama competitions, rodeo, an array of different athletics, activities, community events, and so much more. Visit MyLocalRadio.com today and find what you're looking for. If you're looking for live local sports, local news, weather, Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of Utah 1A Basketball. The Penguins Bobcats have a 10-point lead, 36-26, over the Tinnick Miners in this 1A quarterfinal championship game. Lamb drives, bounce pass across, air, air up and one. Beautiful assist from Lamb to Air. Returned the favor. And Canyon Lamb, a candidate for player of the game, if you did it. Uh, he's got 11 points, uh, I think six or seven rebounds, at least a couple of assists. He's played real smart basketball. And that's the fifth foul on Evans. Curtis Evans finishes with seven points, and he's 
He's done a great job holding air down. I have air for 11 points. Right, and keep in mind, uh, Evans didn't play most of that second quarter and not much in the third quarter as well because of the foul trouble. Make it 12 points for air. Whitney comes left. Fitzgerald looks for the screen from Wall. Backs up. Wall fakes, drives. Fitzgerald looks for Wall. Backdoor cut into the corner. Bobcats defensively just not giving the Miners the look. Fitzgerald, deep three, high bounce, won't go. Air with the rebound for the Bobcats. Air averages eight and a half rebounds per game. That was his eighth. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Wolfley that did, a <laughs> did a good job, but Wolfley's not a big guy. He stood in there square, and Air brings... Um, that was a Manu Ginobili. Jacob Whitney across, and the foul is called. Logan Snell back into the game, so a smaller lineup for Tinnick. Wolfley misses his free throw. He struggled, just one of four from the free throw line in the game. Three-point shot, short, and Lamb with the rebound foul. Fitzgerald had position. Lamb went up and hit him. And for Canyon, that's a third personal foul, 16 foul on Panguich, leading 39-26 on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Three-point shot by Peterson off the front iron, rebound mm. Wolfley. Nice box out by Wolfley at the free throw line, boxing out his man to get that rebound. Great hustle by Jesse Wall. Boy, he wants his team to get back into this one. Does not want to drop into consolation. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by the town of Garden City, Utah. And beautiful Bear Lake, a great place to visit all year round. Log on to bearlake.org today. That's bearlake.org. Wolfley gives up to Ort. Right side, air up top. Bobcats go into their spread it out. He's going to get a five-second count if he doesn't. Dribble quick. Wolfley, ball loose, tip, gets it over to Inglestead. Wall rolls up on Inglestead's leg. Yeah, that could have been bad, but Inglestead looks like he's okay. 32nd timeout. You're watching Utah 1A Basketball on KSL and MyLocalRadio.com. On the construction site, time is money. The professionals at Ellingford Brothers have top quality cement ready to go whenever and wherever you need it. Make sure your timelines are met. Have everything you need delivered right to your job site. Whether it's ready mix concrete, custom crushed sand and gravel, pit run or road base, with two dedicated batch plants you can count on Ellingford Brothers. Delivering on time for generations. 221 County Road in Evanston. Welcome back to this Bear Lake Realty presentation of Utah 1A Basketball. On the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard, the Bobcats lead by 13, 39-26. The Miners desperately need a stop and a point or two to start crawling their way back in this game. One thing that's always impressed me so much about Panguich is if they if they have the opportunity to run and gun, they'll do it. But if they need to be patient like they have been today, get those hard-fought, efficient buckets, they'll do that too. That was on the second offensive rebound. Air puts that basket up and in. Wall drives baseline. Lamb there to cut it off. Little contact, no call. Picked up by Ort. Ort splits the defenders. Fakes left, comes right, lays it up and in. Mm. 13 points in the ball game for Orton. Peterson, little floater, is not going to go. Rebound 
Lamb ahead to Wolfley. He scoops it up and scores. And just like that, the Bobcats bust it open. 26-45, 19-point lead for the Miners. I did not expect this, Ryan. No, Zinnick has at one point in this fourth quarter, but Penguin's defense has really buckled down, and that, uh, that basket seems like it's gotten smaller for Zinnick. They have one free throw in the quarter. That was from Curtis Evans. He's fouled out uh, about four minute, three minutes ago in game time, and Zinnick's offense just hasn't been able to find any open holes or any good efficient looks against this Penguin's D. Nope. Do we have a, just a sec? Yeah, go ahead. No portion of this webcast in its entirety may be used or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Deseret Digital Media. Our broadcast today is brought to you in part by Bear Lake Realty. Visit BearLakeRealty.com today to start enjoying beautiful Bear Lake. They've got beachfront, room of the view, secluded mountain retreats, and a, a, a great number of timeshare options at BearLakeRealty.com. You know, the Bear Lake area... I took my family up for vacation this year. We had a timeshare up there. We had a week and uh, rented a pontoon boat, spent a oh, bunch cool. of time out on the lake. That's gorgeous country up there. We went up. There's a big mine that you can take tours of, and that was pretty spectacular. Huh. I can't remember the name of it. But <laughs> <laughs> it was it was neat country. We really enjoyed our time. So if you're looking at a vacation home, timeshare, Give Gary McKee a call, Bear Lake Realty. Wolfley to air. Boy, this was a, a, a seven-point game to start. Actually, a six-point game early on in the quarter. Lamb. And Penguich oh, go ahead. has pulled away. Al has an opportunity to make it a 20-point game. Lamb truly has been the, the workhorse, the go-to this game. I mean, there's been a lot of good players, but Lamb off the bench has played stellar. Eight rebounds, what, 12 points with that made free throw just now? Yep. Misses that one. I bragged on him too quick. <laughs> he still had a great game off the bench. For He's been a difference maker for this Penguins team because Tinnick putting so much focus on air. Penguins needed somebody else to step up. A.C. Orton's done his regular thing. Canyon Lamb has stepped up big time. Absolutely. Trevor Wolfley's had a great game. He's right at his average, six, six to seven points a game. Lamb, bounce pass to Ort. Bounce pass into Lamb, and he's fouled again. The thing that's inter that interests me about Lamb is he's just kind of nonchalant. Uh huh. He just just does his job. <laughs> you don't see. I mean, he got pretty excited there. Off that when he gave that assist to Air. But uh, Coach Barney brings out Air and Orton. And that brings in Torgerson and Brineholt for the Bobcats. Number 15 is Brineholt. Number 32 is Torgerson. Penguich just a minute and 26 from their third consecutive appearance in the semifinals. One state last year, third place the year before. Lamb misses his free throw. Whitney drives, baseline. Fitzgerald blocked by Lamb and fouled. Obviously a lot more to it, but uh, Tinnick has struggled from the free throw line today with that miss, uh, just six of 11, I believe, if I'm counting correctly, so barely above 50%. Brian Holt gives to Wolfley, Wolfley attacks, scoops and fouled. So defensive defense really has won this game for the Bobcats. The uh, they've held the Miners 
15 points below their season season average of allowed points per game. All right, and the, and the Miners have allowed 47 points per game. A free throw right there by Wolfley puts Penguins just above that at 48. So I think the Miners' defense did what it needed to do. They just didn't get enough from their offense. Right. Houston checks in and... And Sertonio also in the game for the Bobcats. Penguins will move on in the end of the semifinals. They'll face Paiute, which upset Valley earlier today, 37-36. Paiute got a couple of free throws from Bo Sylvester with .5 seconds to go to hold on for the win, or to take the lead and win. This was a six-point game right at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And uh, Penguich has dominated. Tinnick has just one point to make it two with a, two free throws in the entire quarter. Brian Holt with the rebound. Also into the game, Hagen Miller, number 10 for the Bobcats. Sertonio, Houston, Miller. Forty-nine twenty-seven on the Rocky Mountain Yeti scoreboard. Panguich really has pulled away in this fourth quarter. Taken away by number thirty-one. Laid up, blocked. Hagen Miller with the block. We don't have a thirty-one. Mason Young. A Mason Young. That's who it is. At various points in the season, you may have a quarter where you can score three, four points in the quarter. And unfortunately for Tinnick, it happens in the biggest quarter of the season, fourth quarter against Penguins in the quarterfinals. They score three points so far. All of them from the foul line. They have not been able to buy a uh, field goal. 5.4 seconds left to go. and Penguins going back to the free throw line. Borgerson to shoot two. Our next game here from the Sevier Valley Center is on the girls' side, Penguich versus Wendover. Ahead to Young, over Sertonio at the buzzer. Young gets a bucket to break the ice. That's going to do it. For the Bobcats, they will advance to the semifinal game. You've been watching Utah 1A basketball on KSL and mylocalradio.com. We'll take a short break and be back with the Rubies in postgame report and highlights. The Alton Coal Development is located in Alton, Utah. The development employs 32 people at the extraction site and another 30 are employed driving trucks. Alton Coal reclaims the land by restoring habitat for sage grouse and cattle. Alton Coal. I didn't think it was possible to add one more thing to my already busy schedule. Then I realized that earning my degree will not only help me, but my family too. Hi there, Craig Dearden with Castle Rock Chevrolet right here in Evanston. Of course, it's about finding you that perfect vehicle, but at Castle Rock, it's about a lot more. It's using our experience to get you the best rate. We will get you the vehicle that you always wanted. It's about knowing your vehicle is in the right hands. Throughout the buying experience here at Castle Rock Chevrolet, we're here for you. If you're ready to buy a new truck, come to Castle Rock. Auto Farm Castle Rock Chevrolet. We're a different kind of dealer. <laughs>
Welcome back to Utah 1A Basketball presented by Elling Ford Brothers in Evanston. This is the Ruby's Inn postgame report and highlights brought to you by Ruby's Inn. Ruby's Inn is Bryce Canyon National Park and the surrounding area for over 100 years. Excellence in service and to tourism in Garfield County down there when you're visiting national parks. We, uh, we had a really good ball game going on for three quarters, Ryan. Yeah, we really did. Tinnick was within six. It was 32-26. They hit a, few, a free throw right at the beginning of the quarter. Unfortunately for the Miners, Penguich then went on a 15-0 run. Tinnick just couldn't find the bottom of the net, even uh, at the free throw line, just three of six in the fourth quarter. And Penguich ended up dominating that fourth quarter and looks like a dominant win, but it really was a very close, intense, tight game through three quarters of play, Absolutely. three and a half quarters. Absolutely. When uh, when you when we started talking about the game before it started, we're talking about David Whitney averaging 13 points a game, Jesse Wall with 14, and Braxton Peterson with, with 15.6 points a game. That's 44 points a game between right. the between the three of them, 43 points a game. Together they scored, they scored 10 points tonight. The Bobcats defensively just shut the Miners down. Um, and and the big one of the big stories I felt like from the Bobcats was Canyon Lamb off the bench comes in, finished with 13 points. How many rebounds did he finish with? Eight. Know, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So almost a double double off the bench for the Bobcats. Um, so to run out the scoring. Four of the Miners, Whitney with two, Wall with three, Braxton Peterson with five, McCoy Fitzgerald with four. I have Jacob Whitney with four, Mason Young with three, Curtis Evans with seven, and Logan Snell with two. Curtis Evans did a fantastic job defensively on air until he got in foul trouble. Ended up sitting out a lot of time in foul trouble. That foul trouble really hurt Tinnick. But they, I think, like you mentioned, the bigger issue, though, was offensively. They did not get the point production. And a team like like Tinnick, you saw them play last week against Bryce Valley. They shot the lights out. They shot right? lights out. They, they, In a sense, they're one of those live and die by the three. It wasn't falling today, and they couldn't find any other offense. Absolutely. For the Bobcats, uh, Bryson Marshall finished with a point. He had a good game. He got in foul trouble early. Boston Inglestead finished with none, but Boston played a great game. Defensively, I think he's part of the reason that David Whitney didn't do very well. Inglestead just just straight up man the entire game, just worked him over. Yeah, I'm glad you point that out. Inglestead, Wolfley, I mean, those guys, you don't see that defensive effort on the score There's sheet. No There's no stats for it. There's no stat for it, but yeah, great game from those guys. They. There's no way Penguich wins without those guys shutting down the guard line of Tinnick. Absolutely. Wolfley, Wolfley had an uh, eight-point game. Dallin Torgerson with two. Canyon Lamb with 13. A.C. Orton with 13. And Jace Ayer with 14. So that's going to do it for the Ruby's Inn postgame report and highlights. You're watching Utah 1A Basketball on MyLocalRadio.com and on KSL.com. We'll be back. Hi there. Greg Dearden with Castle Rock Chevrolet right here in Evanston. 